CPU mining is really profitable right now and has been a savior in the market as GPU mining isn't showing any signs of becoming profitable. So today's video, I'll be covering everything you need to know about CPU mining from start to finish. If you want to skip around to certain parts of the video, there's timestamps in the description below. First step to start CPU mining is to buy some hardware. Many of you GPU miners will have this hardware already, such as motherboards, power supplies, and CPUs, so you can skip to the other parts. However, if you don't have this, then I'll be going over my recommendations now. The first thing you'll want to pick is a CPU. Now, there are two main CPU manufacturers, and these are AMD and Intel. When it comes to mining, AMD tend to produce more powerful CPUs, but Intel ones are cheaper alternatives. It depends on your price point. For a cheap but powerful CPU, I'd go for an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X. They go for around $400 and have great performance for the price. If you're going for a really cheap CPU, then the Intel Pentium Gold G6400 is very cheap but can still produce profits. My last recommendation is on the pricey side, but is very powerful and it's the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3970X. Now you can do your own searching around, but the main thing to look for in mining performance will be the cores and the threads. The more cores and threads, the higher CPU tends to perform. Mostly the Threadripper series and the Ryzen 9 and 7 series from AMD are great places to start looking. Now once you've picked your CPU, you want to have to find a motherboard and power supply. Motherboards will be able to accommodate your CPU, so you can just do a simple Google search of your CPU and then type in motherboard after it. It should return a bunch of results for different motherboards that you can put your CPU into. Now with your power supply, you don't need a large supply unless you're thinking of using the power supply for multiple CPUs. There are poorly made power supplies on the market, so pick a reputable company like EVGA or Gigabyte. You can pick up a 700 watt PSU for around $50 in today's market. CPUs don't normally draw power past around 200 watts, so a 700 watt PSU is plenty of power. There are a bunch of videos on how to assemble these parts together, but it is pretty straightforward. It's like Lego, so some motherboards will also have Windows set up, but you can download a copy of Windows from the Microsoft website plug it into a USB and put it on the board. Once you boot it up, it'll prompt you to go through Windows on the USB. I want to mention that when it comes to RAM for mining, it doesn't really matter what RAM you're using unless you're mining a coin like Monero. Different algorithms like Ghost Rider don't rely on RAM for better performance. Now, once that's set up, we can move on to things like setting up the software. Now, the software setup will be a bit different depending on what coin you're looking to mine. Obviously, we want to be the most profitable, so we need to find out the most profitable coin for our CPU. Now, I found the best way to calculate this is through Rabid Mining's calculator. There is already some preset CPUs on there, but you don't have to use these, and you can input your own hash rate for each mining algorithm. There isn't much information on the internet about hash rates for different CPUs on different algorithms, but if you take your CPU into nice hash, it should benchmark it for you and give you the hash rates for certain algorithms. If you can't do this and find any information, I would suggest you test your CPU yourself on the algorithms listed on the profitability calculator. To do this, you can just follow the later steps when we set up the miner and just change it for different coins. Then on the profitability calculator, you can just input the hash rate, watts and electricity cost. Hit calculate and it should tell you the most profitable coin to mine on your CPU. Now, once we have a coin chosen, we wanna start mining. Today, I'm gonna to be guiding you through this using Raptorium. Obviously, the most profitable coin that you just saw then for whatever CPU you're using will be the one that you're going to choose. Raptorium is a coin that's mined on the Ghost Rider algorithm. The steps for this coin will be nearly the same for most coins, it's just you may have to use a different mining pool. So once you've found a coin to mine, you'll want to head over to a website called Mining Pool Stats. This website displays all the different mining pools for pretty much all mineable coins. Once here, you can type in the coin in the search bar, and once you click it, it should bring up a bunch of pools for the coins. As we can see here, there are various pools which we can choose from. Now, when it comes to pool mining, the more hash rate it has on the network, the more profit you'll make. This is because they mine more blocks and you'll get a share of those blocks. As we can see here, Flock Pool has the most of the hash rate on the network. However, today we're gonna to be using our plant pool. Now, I found that our plant has a really easy setup and user interface. They offer pools for a lot of other coins and the setup is pretty much the same for a lot of these coins. Now, if you're having any trouble with certain coins, then leave a comment below and I'll try to help you out. When we click on our plant pool, it'll take us to the Raptorium page, which has four tabs. The one we're looking for is the connection tab. 
Once here, you'll actually want to go pick a miner. As you can see, they offer a range of different miners on download by the right side here. This is why I like our plant pool as the user interface is set out to help beginner miners. Now you pick a miner and download it. It should be on GitHub and they should update these regularly. So once downloaded, we want to unzip the files and it'll give us a bunch of these files that relate to different coins. As you can see here, Raptoria Mining is here. If we right click and hit edit, it should bring up some text and this is called a command line and it tells your computer to start mining. But we need to fill in some information before we can start mining and the main one is the wallet address. So to gain a wallet address, it's obviously be different depending on which coin you guys are wanting to mine. Normally the big coins can be mined to non-custodial wallets or online wallets, but just to be sure you can go to the website of the coin you're mining and download their native wallet if you don't really know which wallets will actually hold this coin. I like to use CoinMarketCap as they display wallets that will hold this coin. Right here on Raptorium, we can see the simple wallet will hold Raptorium. So if you just download this and run through the setup, we can generate a wallet address which will then hold our coins that we mine. Now once we have this, we can set up the whole miner file. Easiest way to do this is to go back to our plant pool, come down here on the connection tab and it gives us a bunch of drop down menus to help generate a command line. It's pretty simple from here, just select your miner you're using, as we can see here we're using the CPU miner at the top, select the operating system, for us that will be Windows, and then next we need to select the stratum. It'll probably be one of these three for most coins, so in Europe obviously it covers European countries, America will normally cover Canada and most of Mexico, Asia Pacific will cover a large amount of Asia and normally Australia. So I'm in Europe so we're going to go for that. And then lastly we need to copy our wallet address from the wallet we just set up and then paste it into this box here at the end. Then down below it will generate a command line. Now what we have to do is to copy this miner script at the bottom here and then go to the miner file that we opened up earlier. Paste the text over the text here and then we exit out and save the file. This is basically how you set up miners for all of different coins, it's just this text needs to be different. Now the file is set up, we can just double click it and it will start to run the miner. It should display a startup and then display your CPU mining. You'll know if it's worked as your CPU will confirm a share on the network as it does here. Next thing you'll want to know is how your mining is performing without even looking at your screen. You can do this by going to your miner dashboard. This can be seen on the pool you're mining to. As you can see here, there's a My Miner tab. All you have to do is paste your wallet address back into this box and it should display information on your mining progress. Things like payments pending, payments made to your wallet and hash rate of your miner. As I said, if you are having problems with any of these steps above, leave a comment below and I'll try to help you out. Last step is overclocking. To get more hash rate and efficiency out of your CPU, you can overclock them, which basically means that you speed them up a bit more to get more hash rate. If you are a GPU miner, you'll know it's very easy to overclock a GPU. However, when it comes to CPU overclocking, it's not exactly a walk in the park. I personally don't have enough experience to start giving advice on overclocking CPUs, but there are many great guides on YouTube on how to do this. It's not as simple as just downloading and overclocking software. I believe overclocking for CPUs is done within the BIOS, and that requires a lot of testing to be done before you dial in the right overclocks. So I can't really advise on how to start overclocking, but Rabid Mining has a great tutorial that I'll link in the description below on how to overclock your CPU. So that's it for the video guys, if you did enjoy please like and subscribe to the channel. Any websites that I've shown in this video will be linked down below so you guys can check them all out.